Hey, I wanted to make a different kind of video today. Today happens to be the one year milestone of being an independent contractor for an entire year. It's crazy to think that I've survived a year. I've made it this far. I don't really know how to put it into words, but it's so crazy. See, a year ago, I felt like I had peaked in my workplace. I felt like I wasn't getting the respect that I felt the work deserved. They didn't really respect us as adults. They saw us as kids because we were the youngest people in the entity, the company. I won't really say which one. And ever since I got inspired by Casey Neistat back in 2016, I have been slowly building up my equipment to what it is today. We've got the camera, the lens, we've got lights over here, we've got the microphone, but all of that didn't happen overnight. And neither did this story. Once I felt confident enough, I left my day job and I had no idea the pandemic was gonna happen, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I had started out by covering many events, like really exclusive ones happening in the Rio Grande Valley. Those were like ones that you had to know somebody to get into or you had to be like a part of their affiliation or know their company or something, but it was for a different crowd, let's say that. There are events that sometimes I still cover to this day. It's not where majority of my income is coming from, but at the time it was. There was no pandemic, there was no social distancing, there was no COVID. So these events were happening sometimes three times per day. It was crazy and fun. You know, I, I enjoy event coverage. Then a man that I had met through working at my old job, I would always see him. I'd always say hello out of, you know, courtesy, being polite. And he started to network with me. Well, one day he reached out to me and said that he needs a second shooter for the McAllen Holiday Parade. I was blown away, you know, like that's, that's one of the biggest events here in the Rio Grande Valley. And reluctantly, I said yes. Now, as a result, I did get paid. It was a challenge because a lot of it was photographing at night, something I wouldn't say I have a lot of experience of. Ultimately, he told me that there was a lot that I still had to learn. And looking back, I, I agreed. At the time, I don't think anybody likes being told, hey, you know, you need to be better than this or you need to get better. But he was right. And so I did. And I've been heavily investing time into getting better at photos and constantly making videos, whether it's these YouTube videos or making professional work for clients and services. But I have never stopped creating content because I knew that I would get like stagnant, I would slow down, and ultimately I'm, I'm cheating myself of experience. So I had all these clients lined up for 2020. I felt super happy, I felt super excited. I was, you know, booking like car dealerships and traveling musicians that would go all over the Rio Grande Valley because that's one of my passions is working with musicians, local artists, local businesses too. I would say that's uh, that's definitely where my heart lies. Natalie and I decide to we, that we want to spend Christmas at Disney World in Orlando, Florida, which is pretty cool. It, it's an experience, I'll say that. So we drove 17 hours from Texas all the way to Florida, going to each Disney Park and Universal Studios, this island of adventure, and finally spending Christmas Day at Disney World. That itself is a story. I wish I had kind of vlogged the whole thing, but I kind of wanted to enjoy it more. And I was actually practicing with this camera, so I was more taking photos than I was video. It was extremely packed. You know, there was a chance that COVID may have been there. It's just, it wasn't as well known. It wasn't really affecting the United States at the time, but you really never know. So many people travel from all over the world to Disney, right? And I felt prepared for 2020. So now January comes along, it's still the holidays, which in my opinion is probably the hardest uh, to survive if you're some sort of service provider, unless you're in retail, right? Because, you know, people buy things. Um, but I think some businesses find it really difficult to survive the holidays. I think offering photo and video services might be one of those some people might want to do, you know, like Christmas cards, and some people want to save their money because they're going to spend it on gifts for their family, right? And I was very shocked that I was losing a lot of those clients that I had established at the end of 2019. Things change, things happen over time, but when everything is so new to you, those low blows hit you really hard. So I ended up losing this car dealership. It was a small one, but it was still a car dealership. 
and this traveling mariachi who apparently is known for scamming people. So at the time I was feeling pretty defeated, I would say, and I started applying for jobs, random stuff on indeed.com, whatever it is that they would send me in my emails, just to play it safe. You know, just to put myself out there doesn't mean I have to take it, right? So there was this job that came across, which was a Karloff photographer, and I thought, well, that's a good, probably like steady paying small part-time job maybe. And I could still do my stuff on the side, right? So I applied for it. I didn't think much of it. Little did I know that this company would end up contacting me and offering me the position. So once the pandemic kind of started and the panic started to set in, you start seeing on the news that people are, you know, losing their jobs, people are dying. Um, I decided to take the safe route. And so I took this job. Now, it ended up being contract work. So I was responsible for documenting X amount of vehicles, uploading them right onto this website so that way, you know, the salesman could sell them. And this company that hired me ended up offering me a second position, which was a production coordinator. Now, what I did for them, this is pretty cool. I ended up coordinating their commercials. This included like photo shoots, TV commercials, it, it was a lot of fun. There was times where I even got to interview actors via Zoom, because, you know, social distancing. That, that was a, a challenge sometimes, you know, trying to secure assets like this $60,000 vehicle, or, hey, we need to find this item, this prop, like, at the last minute. And that, that's okay, you know, that happens. That was part of the fun. Ultimately, I was able to extend this contract from 90 days to almost nine months. That itself is something that like my brother has reminded me, I should be proud of that. And as a result of that contract, you know, I made probably close to like 20,000 this year. There was a couple of other side projects that happened as well. There was this team of people that were running for office for an independent school district. And the person that was managing their campaign reached out to me and was like, hey, I remember you, you know, would you be interested in some kind of like small pay to run the social media page. It was mainly a graphic designer position. And I had expressed to them that like, that's not really my strength. It's definitely something I can do, but I would like to offer, you know, photo and video services. And so we started this deal and we got into it and I ended up taking the pictures of these people and they would be up on like these cool like boards, you know, that you would see like, hey, this person's running for office, right? That was pretty fun. We ended up making a couple of profile videos too. As always, my interview questions were very personal to me. It was all about what is it that I would want to know about a candidate that's running for office, somebody that's going to affect like the quality of my life or my kid's life, things I would want to know about them. Like, what is their background? What are their passions? You know, what is it that they want to change? Which I feel like every politician or person running for office should know if they're running for office, right? And Fortunately, these people were very genuine. They were very, um, what's the word? Qualified for these jobs that we're talking like, they're, most of them were retired. They had already done all these things that they were trying to, to look after, I guess, when they, when they get these positions for the district. And I was so happy and blessed to work with very honest, very genuine people now we're in October, right, of 2020. At this point, the employer contacts me and says, hey, you know, we're not gonna be able to extend your contract. And I said, that's totally fine. You know, I mean, we went into this knowing it was gonna be temporary. I appreciate the notice and we parted ways. So that was like the end of October. Now we're in November, soon to be December and next thing you know, the year is gonna be over. So now I'm back to looking for my next big thing I've thrown myself out there for employers. You got, I feel like you got to always have a backup, right? Like just because you're full-time freelancing, I feel like you should still have some kind of safety net, which is constantly applying for jobs. Because in this case, like the pandemic happened, you have no idea what's going to happen. You have no idea if you're going to get into an accident, if you're going to have a sudden increase in medical bills or something. So I feel you should kind of be prepared for the worst. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just how I think. Ultimately, it's been a wild year <laughs> wild not just because of the pandemic just because of everywhere that god has taken me right would i recommend this to somebody 
only if you are very passionate and if you have somewhat of a plan, a goal in mind, baby steps, right? I don't, I wouldn't recommend to you, hey, you're passionate about this, I think you should leave your job. I feel like I would have to really know that individual, I would have to really listen to them and see their skills and be like, you know what, you could do this, you could start the next firm, right? I would say the biggest win out of all this is having the flexibility of my schedule, right? It's like sometimes I work, sometimes I don't, but when I do work, like that money, you know, makes up for the days that I didn't work. God willing, it's going to balance itself out, right, within a year. I've had my ups and downs. I would definitely say that. I think it's going to be anybody, but I think as a full-time independent contractor, you're definitely going to have more downs, and that's probably really discouraging for a lot of people. In my case, I've got a great support system. I've got my amazing girlfriend. I've got my amazing parents. I've got some amazing friends that are in a similar situation that we all kind of like push each other, but ultimately this is not for everybody. And during a pandemic, it's, man, it's even more iffy, right? I can't believe I've made it one year doing this. Honestly, it's shocking. Like I had no idea I was gonna be here, but I'm very thankful for the opportunities that God has given me. I'm very thankful for the people in my life that have supported me and who knows where I'll be in another year, right? <laughs> All right. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm going to let you go. It's been it's been a while, right? What are we at? Oh my lord, 14 minutes. That's too long. Okay. I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.